Were you to look at this glass in front of you, this cup, how do I get all of the air out of this glass? Well, you might say to me, Joe, maybe you could put it inside a box and, and, and make sure it was airtight. Well, yeah, that'll get most of it out, but there'll still be traces of air left in this glass. Maybe then, Joe, oh, oh I know what you could do. Uh, you could get the most fantastic vacuum cleaner in the world, the Kirby vacuum, and suck all the air out. Do you see what I did there? Yeah, y you could do that, but it wouldn't quite get out every bit of air. Do you know what you need to do to ensure there's no air left in this glass. Fill it with something else, something pure like water. And my dear friends, that is what you need to do every day. You need to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And sometimes when we go through life, this happens or that happens. And we leak a bit, don't we? So what happens when we leak? Well, again, we come before God and we say, Lord, I failed you today. Today, there might be sin in my life that's, that's got hold of me. So once we've confessed our sin, God can come along and fill us again with his spirit. A number of years ago, there was a missionary couple who had a real desire to see the people of Israel converted, discovering the true Messiah, Yeshua himself, the risen savior. And so they bought a house in Jerusalem. Now, when they moved in, they soon discovered they weren't the only people who lived there. Do you know who else lived in that house? There was a little white dove who'd nested itself in the rooftops. And the missionary couple were so happy about this, they felt like it was a seal upon their ministry. Because we know who the dove is in the Bible. It's the Holy Spirit. But there was something quite interesting about this dove. You see, every time they had an argument, every time they slammed a door, the dove would fly off. And one day the husband sat down with the wife and said this to her, Listen honey, Either we are going to have to adjust to the dove, or the dove will have to learn to adjust to us. And the wife looked back at him with tears in her eyes and said, I know, I am so terrified that one day the dove will fly away and he'll never come back again. And from that day onwards, that missionary couple never argued again. My dear precious believer, can I ask you a very big personal question? Is the dove flying away in your life? Are you doing things to grieve the Holy Spirit? What I'm about to tell you is something that very few Christians know. The Holy Spirit is a very sensitive person. The Holy Spirit's personality is a very shy personality. And you don't have to do much to make the dove fly away. Ephesians 4 verse 30 says this, And do not grieve the Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And that word grieve in the Greek means to hurt someone's feelings. So you and I can very easily hurt the feelings of the Holy Spirit. But did you know this? In Ephesians 4 verse 31, it tells us the very specific things which grieve the Holy Spirit. And it's not what you might first think. It says this, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So a bitter thought enters into your mind. And before you know it, you've gossiped the dove flies away. You're driving in your car and someone pulls out in front of you. You lose your temper. What happens? The dove flies away. There you are in front of your loved one. They upset you. They hurt you. You raise your voice. What happens? The dove flies away. You see, when we grieve the Holy Spirit, we don't lose our salvation. As that verse said in, in Ephesians 4 verse 30, we're sealed till the day of redemption. It's like glue. Once you become part of God, he keeps hold of you. But we lose the presence of God. We lose the joy of God, the peace of God. We lose the anointing of God. There was once a, a lovely mother and a lovely little girl. And the mother bought this pristine white dress for the little girl. And one day the little girl was to go out and play with her friends. So the mother said to the little girl, you must make sure that when you go out to play with the other boys and girls, you do not get your dress dirty. So as the hours went by, she knocked on the door. Do you think that little girl turned up with a clean dress or a dirty dress? What do you think? It was absolutely covered in soil and mud. And the crazy thing about this story is it didn't just happen once. It happened again and again for years and years until what happened to that little girl? She grew up into a woman. She grew up to be like her mother. And over time, the mother's spirit had been imparted to the little girl. She'd learnt her mother's ways. And my dear brother, 
My dear sister, that's what God did for you when he sent his spirit into the world. He gives us his mind, his thoughts, his desires, and he presses them into our hearts so that they make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ, his son. You know the Lord Jesus Christ, after he suffered and died on the cross, after he took the weight of your sin on the cross, he was laid in a tomb and there was total stillness over his body. He was dead. That It would be flatline if you attached his heart to one of those monitors. But the Bible says this, the same spirit which raised Christ from the dead lives in you. And that spirit hovered over Christ's body and brought him back to life. And that's why if you have trouble in your life, that's why if you have sin in your life, you need the Holy Spirit to get you through all of these problems. So what am I going to ask you to do right now? If you have not yet ever asked to be filled by the Holy Spirit, get on your knees now and call out to him to fill you richly and fully, to revive your spirit and to give you a new heart and new desire. Because let's be honest guys, Christianity without the Holy Spirit is like dry water, it just doesn't work. Your spiritual life will be boring, you'll be dull, you need to be full of the Holy Spirit and to cry out for the joy of the Lord, the peace of God and to be seeking out his will in every every single step you take in this life until the Lord Jesus returns. D.L. Moody once said, the world has yet to see what God can do with a man fully surrendered to him and by God's help I aim to be that man. I wonder if that could be said about you. You aim to be that man. You aim to be that woman who is fully surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Hey, we've all got chains. Some of you now walking by, you might have the chains of addiction. You can't put the bottle down. Some of you might have the chains of lust. You cannot control your eyes. Some of you might have the chains of bitterness, of unforgiveness. But do you know this? Do you know there's one chain which binds us all? Do you know there's one chain that every single one of us has in common? Do you know what the chain is? The chain of death. Now, right or wrong, you tell me if I'm right or wrong when I say this. 10 out of 10 people die. Is that right or is that wrong? It's right, isn't it? 150,000 people die every single day. And my question to you, people in London today, do you have an answer to your grave? Did you know there was a man 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, who came into this world? And he taught amazing things. He fed the poor, he healed the sick, he did amazing things. But you know how this world treats him? They spat on him. They smashed the crown of thorns into his skull and they nailed him onto a cross. Now the physical suffering, you know what you see on the painting and all around the physical suffering? That was not the worst bit. The worst bit was, it says in the Bible, between the sixth and the ninth hour, darkness fell on the land. And between those three hours, Jesus cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you left me? Because all of God's wrath, all of God's anger was poured out on Jesus for your sin. The thing that you looked at on the internet, for that lie, for that time you were angry, all of it was laid on Jesus and he was crucified there on that cross so you could be forgiven, so you could have a home in heaven. Now here's the big question for you. This is what you all need to think about. If you died, okay, imagine you died and then three days later came back from the dead. I'd listen very carefully to what you had to say. So when Jesus died on the cross and on the third day he rose from the dead, we need, need to listen very carefully to Jesus when he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. It's only through him, friends. Now, I'm just going to put one final challenge out. Now, if you're a skeptic in London, if you're an atheist, if you don't believe in God, I want your attention right now. What would you think of me now, atheist, if I said to you, Harry Potter is a terrible book? What would you do if I said, Harry Potter is the worst book in the world? What would you think of me? What if I said, Harry Potter is a terrible book, but I've never read it before, what would you think of me then? We'd say, read it first and then make a judgment. Do not say the Bible's a load of rubbish without reading it first. And I'll give anyone who's not too ashamed to come and take a portion of the Bible from my hand. You've got to be brave now, but if anyone wants to take it, just come and take it from my hand. Whoever, the first person who takes this is the bravest man or woman in London. Who would like to take it? This man, give me a round of applause. Anyone else want one? God bless you, God bless you, read it. Anyone else? Jesus said, I am the bread of food you need. Read it for yourself. God bless you. 
Now let's not brush things under the carpet. We've talked about some serious things in this video and perhaps as someone watching this now and you sense that you have grieved the Holy Spirit. Well, I've got a whole bunch of videos on repetitive sin and repentance. Please go and watch them now because I do think they'll help. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love it if you click that subscribe button and join this family.